Oh. Hey Britnets, Chris here, aka Brickinet, and today I thought I'd do a little bit differently and show you behind the scenes of what I've been doing on the Lego room upstairs as I've moved up to the attic a couple of weeks ago now, and there's still so much stuff to do and I'm having issues finding shelving spaces, cupboards, the right Lego tables and all that kind of stuff. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to share my experiences with you guys because I'm sure everyone else has these same issues. So I thought, let's do it in more of a vlog format. If you guys like this, it might start becoming a weekly thing or maybe even every other couple of days to kind of get this through because I know a lot of you have been acting for Lego City updates. And to be honest, I just haven't got the bricks and stuff ready because of the stuff that's happening in the world and I'm trying to get mocks. I've got a computer on order. So I thought, do you know what, I'm gonna do it more like this. You guys can see more of what I've been doing in the background. You can kind of see the bits I've been doing on the Lego City that haven't been really worth doing a whole City update for. So yeah, so let me know if you like this video and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel, but let's get into it. So if you guys haven't seen this room before, you can see that I don't have much headroom in this room <laughs> it actually is not as bad as it looks on the cameras but i do have a really bad slanted roof so obviously you can't really put shelving up because even if you did it hit my head because the room doesn't have that much in terms of width so i've been trying to figure that out and i was looking at getting some billy bookshelves but they were too way too tall they do a smaller one as well but they were then way too wide and still a little bit too tall for this room so i actually went on to amazon and found these ones these ones right here so these are just literally really, really small. Like you can see they're not very tall at all, but they have enough room and depth to actually start fitting on some pretty decent Lego sets. So I've got my NES here at the back behind me now. So this is literally right over here. So you can see this hopefully on camera when we do some live streams and stuff. And then they actually supposed to have shelving all the way across. But the problem is that the shelves don't move on these ones where obviously the Billy bookshelves, you can put them wherever. So what I did was actually just tuck that shelf off and I might get some risers for this or something to kind of raise them up a little bit so you can see them. But for now I put Jabba's Palace and Dio just kind of down here at the moment. But I might, like I said, try and find some way to make a fake shelf to put these a little bit higher so you can see them on the screen because they are pretty damn cool sets. So um, I wanted to show them. Dio not so much, but anyway, that's onto that one. So swinging on the chair over to this side, you can actually see down here is where I've got all my current sets that I've yet to build or ones that I bought kind of duplicates of just in case because some of them they're really good for parts and if you can get them on a, a discount pretty worth just parting out but I haven't really parted anything out yet it's kind of got them all here this is an old tv stand that I used to use so I thought I took the doors off and put now lego sets down there it's pretty cool I actually seem to have quite a lot of Jurassic Park sets don't know why but they're pretty cool so I'm going to build them at some point pretty nice but I do have more than one just one cupboard and that is the ones you've probably seen in the background which are these ones. So I thought I'd show you what I've been doing with these over here. Okay, so pardon the mess down here, but I have some tripods and stuff which I still need to find places for down in this area. And I've also got a few little Lego sets on the floor as well, which I'm just really, really struggling to find space for. But what I wanted to do was, with obviously this guy being a, you know, a proper Lego channel with lots of different themes and stuff, not just one that I'm really honing in on, I really wanted to have a little cubby hole for each of the different themes. So at least I've kind of got a varying amount of themes that you guys can take a look at and stuff. So what I decided to do was basically have a little cubby hole for each of the themes. Starting off down here, we just have, literally that is my entire Marvel collection, the two mechs. I also have the Spider-Man mech that I need to build as well. I also have the Peagle pack as well that came with Black Widow and the Falcons, I'll probably put them in there as well. But if there are any cool Avengers sets, let me know guys, because I haven't really found any that are really worth buying in my opinion. Maybe the Avengers tower, but that's not gonna fit in this cubby hole. So, other than that, we've got the A-Wing and we've got some Batman. So let's take a look at the other cubby holes. So just going to Candid Camera, shaky cam for this, but here we can see there is the SpongeBob set that I've got. That is gonna be going into the Legacy at some point, but it's just nice to have a little SpongeBob bit here with Glove World and the Good Neighbors at Bikini Bottom. Then I've got some of the actual Bat Cave, because this is pretty cool, I really do like this set. So I've got it with the four plus set, and I just thought this looks really nice to display at the moment. Again, this is gonna be going into the Legacy at some point, but it's nice to get them here so I can see them and it reminds me to put them into the city at some point. Then I've actually done it for you Potter fans. I have a cubicle with Harry Potter sets. So that's the new Privet Drive, which is pretty nice. And then we have the Room of Requirements and the little figure pack that we had this year as well. So probably need to get some more. I was thinking of maybe getting some of the new cheaper ones as well. The one with um, the uh, Sagittarius people, whatever they're called. But that looked like kind of a cool set. So I might get that one as well at some point because it's kind of small and can fit in here quite nicely. And then obviously on top at the moment, we have the Mario sets. So here's Bowser's Castle, looking absolutely awesome. I really do like this set. So at the moment that's gonna stay here, but I am thinking of finding somewhere else to put my Mario sets because I obviously have 
a lot of them, all of them. So there's Bowser Jr. Then we have the Piranha Plant dude here. I really like this built Piranha Plant, so I wanted to have him on display because he's pretty, pretty cool. Then we have Shy Guy and Koopa Trooper as well as the Guarded Fortress in the background because it just looks really, really cool like that with the pinky uh, lights going on behind. Then we've got some more of the packs here with Toadette and Toad with the mushrooms. They look quite cool there as well as a display with the Eat Cheeps in the background and stuff. And then over here we have Mario's house with Yoshi as well. Um, Mario usually is sleeping in his little bed, but he's not at the moment because Steph is actually building Womp's Lava Trouble downstairs. So um, she's using him obviously to scan in the pieces and stuff. Before we get onto the Star Wars stuff, I also have all of these sets for the Mario as well, because there's just so many sets of them. So that's why I'm going to find another place to put my Mario sets, because I think I'm, basically they need an entire wall, I think, to show them all off and show them as like different level bits. So they're taking up too much of this cupboard space, so I don't think that they're going to stay there. But for now, they look quite cool in the background until I find a better place for them. This is something I was thinking of doing for a while, and I, I got these two new sets. So I thought this would be a really cool way to do it. But you guys, a lot of you are obsessed with the Clone Wars, and I've really started getting into it recently. So I thought I'd put the AAT and the new Final Fantasy backpack on one shelf. And something needs to go here. I need to get some new Clone Wars sets and stuff. So if you guys can let me know what should be kind of going here to have a Clone Wars actual area, then that'd be really cool to pad that out. So above that, I've got all my... Well, these aren't all of them. These are a select few of my Star Wars minifigures. I now have enough to put a bit extra in the columns over here so I can add a few more in. But these are basically kind of some of my favourites that I've collected over the years. So I think that looks really cool there to display all my awesome LEGO Star Wars minifigs. And then over here, I actually have another one. So down here is just the shrimp shack that needs to go in the city, but I just wanted somewhere to put it. And then the, uh, the Sith tie dagger, which I think I'm going to get take away and put the minifigs in my display area but yeah I've now got a Monkey King area so here's the Monkey King mech at the moment I've got the new brick head who looks absolutely awesome so I'll put him there as well with even the Monkey King on his cloud which is pretty funny uh, and then we just have the building in the corner that needs to go in the city at some point as well but I started doing that this space was blank because Kylo Ren's shutter was here right there but I was using it and putting it on the table for the moment because I just like looking at this. I think it's such a cool ship, this one. If you guys haven't got this one yet, you should really get it because it's really cool. And it does display three minifigs inside as well, which is quite funny because none of those guys come with the set. But I really do like this one. I think this is great. So I wanted, to, didn't really want another Star Wars area because I have so much Star Wars going on. But there is going to be a new Star Wars set that's going to go here, which is where the Barracuda ship is at the moment. But I'm going to change this back into Barracuda Bay because I preferred it as Barracuda Bay. So I'm going to change that back, but I think I'm going to be getting Tantive 4 to go here, guys, because I just think it's going to look so cool having Tantive 4 there. And then you guys would then see me over here kind of vlogging and then just see Tantive 4 in the corner. I think it would look so, so cool. But obviously, I think you guys have probably noticed that I actually have uh, some other big sets that you can see in the background, which is peeking out right there, which is my Slave 1 and my Millennium Falcon. Now, obviously, they ain't going to fit in these here. So what I had to do was actually get a TV uh, cupboard and put them on top of there. So let's take a look at those. So as you can see, this is actually a TV stand, which I used to have an old TV on this back in the day, quite a while ago, but I thought I'd use this actually for putting Lego sets on up here because it doesn't have to have the best furniture, but it's all nice and white and it all kind of matches, which is pretty cool. So I have my ultimate Millennium Falcon. This is actually got lights in it, but I uh, haven't got a long enough extension lead yet to plug it in. So I'll be doing that in the future and you'll be seeing it lit up in the background and stuff, maybe on live streams and things. I've also got my ATST over here because it is just awesome from the Mandalorian and my Slave One, which is one of the old sets that has survived along with Jabba's Palace from my old collecting days. But other, other than that, we also have the Mandalorian and the Child. These are new in my collection that I got when I picked them up on August 1st. We have the 20th anniversary sets of the minifigs, they look really cool. And behind them is the Mando and some of the other characters. That's not actually IG-11, that's IG-88, but it's the same character, so I've used him there. And then obviously the minifigs that come with the Millennium Falcon. So I just thought these sets just looked really, really cool together. And the, the biggest sets so they aren't gonna fit in these cupboards. As you can see, that's the end of the cupboard. And yeah, Slave One's way taller. So obviously the Millennium Falcon is basically the size of a table. So that's not gonna fit in there. But 
that was kind of this section. So another thing I wanted to ask you guys was, what do you do with boxes? I have so many boxes recently from doing all this Mario stuff. They're absolutely everywhere. I think you've probably seen me kind of moving them around, but I've just got them everywhere at the moment and they're just crazy. So the solution that I found at the moment is this, basically storing them underneath my Lego C. And I know most of you guys don't have six tables to put boxes under. So I was just generally interested in what you guys actually do with them because there's just so many of them, they're everywhere. If, you, if I turn the camera over here, you'll see these are all the boxes I've got. That's the NES one. That's some more Super Mario over there. They're all my uh, UCS sets that I've collected in the past. A couple of uh, things back there, but it does build up and I think I might start getting rid of them. So I just wanted to know your guys' view on whether you get rid of boxes or not, or whether it's just something that maybe just the people like me who buy way too much Lego struggle with but um i think pretty much most lego fans buy way too much lego it's just the thing it, that, that happens so really interesting to know you guys views though and uh, yeah i think i might have to pull the plug and actually just put them all in the recycling Ugh. okay well in terms of lego city updates as you can see at the moment the lego city is in a bit of dire straits and that's because i just had so many sets to bring up here to sort through with my massive haul that i did august 1st that i had to move it around i also actually moved this table here this one actually got changed because I wanted to add this cupboard in. So it got changed over. And because of that, I had to actually, this was all the city that was there. So I had to carefully move it. It's all modular, so it looks all broken, but it's not. So I need to put all that back at some point. Uh, the original one that I did back there is still all in perfect condition. That's stayed fine. I haven't touched that table. But I have started doing some doodles of what I want to be doing and changing in the city. So I might do that in my next kind of vloggy update. Uh, so if you guys want to see that, let me know and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see me kind of going through what I'm going to be doing. But basically, I've been really struggling with train tracks. So I've been trying to find out how to get the train in without really taking up too much space because trains take up a lot, a lot of space. So I think I've got an idea for that. And I just want to kind of draw it up a little bit more and then I'll, I'll show you guys what I've been thinking. But yeah, that's the city update at the moment. What I need to do this weekend is actually pick up all the other tables that I've got and start putting them in the city so you can really start laying out. And finally, I got my BrickLink order of base plates. These are all half base plates, which is gonna be great for making some half modulars. And I got some dark green ones, which just look so much nicer than the light green ones that you get in the pack. So I'm gonna make the extra, it's a bit extra money, but I'm gonna make the extra effort and actually get these dark ones instead. I also have some more base plates on order, but they've taken so long to come through, which is sand ones for underwater levels as well as beach and stuff. So yeah, hopefully that'll be starting to look really cool and we can start planning out the areas, just using base plates to see what we're gonna be doing and where. But I also did buy some pretty cool sets the other day, which haven't come yet. So um, I might share them off in a vlog as well of what I'm thinking of putting where in the city. So that was a stopgap tour around my current Lego City room. Lots of people have been asking for it. The problem is that like always, I wanna try and make it as perfect as possible. That's just not gonna happen. It's gonna take weeks and weeks of doing that. So I thought, why not actually just show you guys what I'm doing each week and, and you know, maybe every couple of days just showing you the updates I've been doing to the room, changing around the stuff in the background, change around a little bit to the Lego City so you can see it because I think all you guys wanna do is just see the progress that I've been making and sometimes I try and make it that I do way too much to make a really nice 20 minute video, which you guys might not even wanna see a 20 minute video. So let me know in the comments down below what kind of videos you wanna see. If this one's one of those kind of that you would love to see more of or whether you just wanna see proper in-depth mocks for a full 20 minute Lego City update. They will take a lot longer to do, but these ones I just thought were a bit more chilled, a bit more relaxing, less stressful, and just showing you what I've been doing. So other than that, I hope you have an absolutely awesome day. And if you haven't checked out some of my old Lego City updates, I'll put the playlist up at the end of the video. But other than that, catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed the vid, then if you haven't already, please like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. And as always, keep bricking it. Thanks.